Hey folks, James here from Sweepy Machine Embroidery. I hope you all had a wonderful time over your holiday break and are excited to get back into some sewing with Sweepy's January Sew Along. I'm excited to announce that this month we're making this Cube Illusion Runner. This design merges intricate technique and creativity, bringing you this awesome looking runner and quilt. Please head on over to our January Sew Along group to find all the details and rules on this monthly competition and you'll also find yourself a 30% discount code you can use on the Cube Illusion Runner and Quilt at checkout. I'll leave a link for that Facebook group in the description below. If you did find this video tutorial helpful, please remember to like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let's get into it. I want to start this video off by showing you how to stitch out Cube Block 1. Prepare your workspace by hooping up cutaway stabilizer in the embroidery hoop. Load design onto your machine and have applique scissors for trimming both the batting and fabric. Commence by stitching the placement line for the batting. Lay batting one over the hoop, covering the placement line and secure it in place with stitching. Once completed, remove your hoop from the machine and trim the excess batting to approximately 1 to 2 millimeters from the stitching. Next, position fabric A right side up over the hoop, covering the batting and stitch it down. The stitching will encompass the center. Remove the hoop and trim the fabric about 1 to 2 mm from the stitching, leaving the excess material within the seams. Proceed by stitching the place and line for the inside top triangle. Place fabric B right side up over the hoop, covering the place and line, and stitch it down. Trim the excess fabric. Stitch the place and line for the inside bottom triangle. Repeat the process by using fabric C for the bottom triangle. Employing the flip and fold technique. Trim as needed. Embroider the quilting to enhance the block's texture. Repeat the applique process for the half circle using fabric D. Further embroider the quilting to accentuate the block's design. Employ satin stitching around both the half circle and the center. Upon completion, remove the block from the hoop and trim the seams to approximately half an inch. Set it aside until all your blocks are assembled. Using your regular sewing machine now, I want to show you how to join the cube blocks. Prepare your workspace by laying out the cube blocks on a flat surface. Start by placing your first two blocks together with their right sides facing one another. Pin them in place and stitch 1 to 2 millimeters inside the existing border stitch lines on the blocks. This technique ensures that the border stitching doesn't show on the front. Open the stitch seams and press them neatly.
Next, align the first seam by positioning the top cube block on the other sewn cube block, again with right sides together. Pin and stitch 1 to 2 millimeters inside the border stitch lines to keep the stitching invisible on the front. Employ a back stitch at the start and end to secure the stitching firmly. Repeat this stitching process with the remaining seams. Press open each seam carefully, working on one intersection at a time. Press the seam towards the intersection and then the corner points to form a pinwheel effect. Avoid trimming these corner pieces as doing so might compromise the intersection strength. Clip the corner of the joined cube blocks for a tidy finish. Set aside the joined blocks and continue until all your cubes are assembled. Now let's look at joining your blocks. Begin by laying out your cube blocks on a flat surface, arranging them according to your desired layout. Start joining your blocks in rows. Place the first two blocks together with their right sides facing each other. Pin and stitch 1 to 2 millimeters inside the existing border stitch lines on the blocks. Ensuring the border stitching remains invisible on the front. Utilizing the stitching to the net technique for this purpose. Once stitched, open the seams and press them neatly. Repeat this process until each horizontal row of blocks is joined. Moving on to joining the horizontal rows to each other. Position the first seam by aligning one cube row atop the other. Again with right sides together. Pin and stitch 1 to 2 millimeters inside the border stitch lines to maintain an unseen border stitch on the front. Employ the stitching to the net technique as before.
Now repeat this process for all the remaining seams. Pressing open each seam as you progress. Work meticulously on one intersection at a time. Press the seam towards the intersection and manipulate the corner points to create a pinwheel effect for a neat finish. Continue this sequence until all horizontal rows are effectively joined together. Now let's look at cutting your backing and adding it to your project. Begin by placing Fabric Eye, the backing fabric, on your work surface with the right sides facing up. Lay your sewn runner on top of Fabric Eye, ensuring their right sides are together. Secure the layers with pins now, leaving an opening approximately 6 inches 15 centimeters wide for turning later. Stitch 1 to 2 millimeters inside the existing border stitch lines on the blocks, making sure to leave the designated opening untouched. Now trim the seams to a quarter inch, 6 millimeters, except for the opening, which can be optionally trimmed to half an inch, 12.5 millimeters, to facilitate turning.
Clip the corners to achieve sharper points when turned. Now carefully turn the runner right side out through the opening. Utilize a chopstick or a similar tool to assist in pushing out the corners for a well-defined shape. Close the opening using hand stitching or fabric glue for a secure finish. For an optional finish, consider stitching in the ditch. Select the main seams to secure the central blocks flat. Ensure the bobbin thread underneath matches the backing fabric, while using an invisible thread or a matching thread color on top to blend with the fabric in the seam. This technique results in invisible stitching on the front and visible stitching on the backside of the runner. After completing the stitching, give the runner a good press with your iron. Well done, your runner is now beautifully completed and ready for use.
as we finish up another awesome Soul Along project. We hope you've enjoyed learning and creating with us. Remember, our January Soul Along group is here to support your sewing journey, offering tips, tricks, and inspiration. Don't forget to check out the featured post section for exclusive information and a generous 30% discount code for this project. Thank you so much for being a part of our vibrant sewing community. Happy stitching and see you on our next Soul Long adventure. Shop now at sweepy.com. That is S-W-P-E-A dot com.